iconic looking. It's so fucking ugly from the outside. It's like yellow and green. It's like urine and mold or something. And, and some band's name on the marquee that's just insane, you know? And two of the letters have fallen off. And there's a Louisville slugger as the thing that you push the door open. And the same pair of like nasty Converse has been sitting above the front stage like on a ledge like for like seven years now. It's just like people don't mess with stuff. It's really weird. Uh, one change we made when I came in 2008 is we added the stage. So this was more of a game room, like an arcade room. But I wanted a place for bands to continue to grow from with a, with a sound guy and four monitor mixes and a sub. And that's what we did here. The back has changed a lot on and off with the different food options we've had and things, but what would stay the same is the front room. Very, very little has changed and that's the way I want it. That is the real heart of this place. I think it was uh, 75 when the first person played. The Hole in the Wall has had so many people play. You can pick any genre, any era, starting in the 70s. Towns Van Zandt, Steve Ray Vaughan, Spoon, there has been so much talent on that front stage that it's incredible. Real legends, real, real legends, not just in Austin, but people who are legendary to, to music geeks all over the world have played at the Hole in the Wall. And that history doesn't define it, but it makes people realize that it's an important place. You're really, really talking about one of the most historic places in the city. It has been open for 40 some years. The average lifespan of a venue in Austin is a few years. You know, it's incredibly hard to keep a place open. And it's not just hard, it's improbable. Like, how could it still be going on if there wasn't something magical happening? The challenges of owning Hole in the Wall or any venue is you're just in the music business. I just feel so strongly in live art, you know, that people, I think music communicates uh, not only information, but, but feelings better than almost anything else. That makes up for any, any other challenge. Like most things on the drag, our, our problem is often the rent. A couple years ago, when the Hole in the Wall had that very public lease negotiation, it was really just about the rent and the perception of where the business should be. A lot of historic venues have closed in Austin, and it's generally been a rent thing. This town has had so many real estate booms. Yeah, while we have challenges and, uh, you know, bas which basically comes down to high rent, high property value, and a city that has not figured out how to deal with that and like honor and preserve the music history and heritage that we have. Even with those challenges, you know, I still have a lot of hope for us. I think it's important that places like the Hole in the Wall, not just the Hole in the Wall, but other places like the Hole in the Wall stay around as you, you have a sense of history when you meet your girlfriends and fiancés and your best friends and your worst enemies. I mean, it's kind of what, what we do. There's a Marriott going in next door. I would love to stay in a Marriott that had a 43-year-old music venue next door. I'm looking forward to the hundreds of construction workers being next door and I want to sell them a beer and I want to show them some music because it can feel like we're always closing, like the city doesn't care and the rent's going up or whatever, but I try to look on the bright side. Everything that closes in Austin that's culture, that has cultural value, somebody stands up and they say, that's, that's it, that's the death of Austin. You know what I mean? The taco shop closed, like what? Austin is over. And a lot of times they're full of shit. If the hole in the wall closed, I might actually say, okay, wait, Austin is over. It is Austin. Go to shows, go support live music.